Welcome. In this video, we're going to do a solo playthrough showing you how to play Dice Throne Adventures. So this is going to be session one and will be what they call a portal crawl. First, we're going to set up our campaign sheet. So team name, Dale the Casual Barbarian. We're playing on normal difficulty because I've never played this before. So I want to give myself a chance and scenario score is going to be 20 on here. Of course, I'm Dale. And playing the Barbarian and everything else, we are going to set out depending on how we do. So this does go to 20 sessions. Uh, best we can do is eight sessions, I do believe, but I guess they are prepared for us to lose. So with that, and since I haven't played this game and it looks like over a year now, or the base game, this is my first adventure, I'm going back to the Barbarian. Hacking, slashing, and mashing may not be elegant, but you know what? It works. So we're going with him, so it's kind of a Yahtzee-style game. In this, we're going to go through a map, trying to level up, and then face a minor boss. And then session two, if we win, we'll be going after one of the major bosses. So if they're Yahtzee styles, we've got different attacks we can get going. Our ultimate ability here with Rage, three more attacks, and a defense ability. Like I said, I'm just going to teach it as we play here in a bit. We do have some special tokens, Concussion. Player afflicted with this token must skip their income phase and then remove this token. Not going to be useful against our minions, possibly against bosses. Then we have stun. Uh, perform another offensive roll phase. So player affected with this token may not take may take no actions of any kind. After the attack concludes, a player who inflicted stun removes the token and then immediately targets the same opponent with an additional offensive roll phase. And this is showing what our different dice symbols are going to be. So we've got our fun dice, like I said, they've got symbols and they are just regular six-sided dice with numbers on them. We also get a d20 for our loot die. As with any great game, they gave us some reference cards. So this came in the base game telling us how our turn order is going to go. And then card timing and status effects. And then for portal crawl, so moving and then fighting minions. And of course on the back, false battle turn orders, which will be session two, hopefully. As with the base game, we are gonna start with two combat points and start with a hand of four cards. So we'll give this a shuffle and see what we get to start with. So triple up. So with this symbol, we can pretty much play at any time. It's gonna cost us two combat points, allows us to draw three cards, concuss, play during one of the two main phases, cost one, inflict a concussion on a chosen opponent, tip it, one CP, increase or decrease any die by the value of one, and transference, transfer one status effect token from a chosen player to another chosen player. So it would have been hoping for some upgrades, but you get what you get. Then we're going to get two salve tokens and our scenario will tell us what they're going to do for us. So our scenario tokens, we have four level ones. We're just take those and randomize them and choose one. And we are getting this for a portal crawl. So this is going to tell us how to set up our map, our hero setup. So depending on the number of players, we're playing one player. So we're going to start with 35 health get our two starting salve amongst our teams, and we start with 15 gold. So this is loot so we can purchase stuff at the end of our session. And 35 health. Of course, we've got our, I did the upgrade on the miniatures. So this is our barbarian. And the salve tokens, we're gonna to heal three health plus one per portal shard collected or revive a down teammate to one health. Unfortunately, if you're playing solo, if you're down, game over, try the scenario again. So we're gonna make our map. So we'll give our level one tiles a shuffle. And I think I can move these over a little bit more. Set those out like that. Then our level twos get shuffled. And 
And we're gonna get one level three. So we've got our map laid out. We do have some tokens. So we're gonna get three salve tokens, two level two chest and a level one, and then place our goals that we need to get in those locations. All right, so our map is set up. We start here in the Crimson Sands. So our goal to complete this is to collect these three. They'll go over on that. And then we'll go back to that and face a big minion. And we need to do all that without dying. So we've got everything set up. So our portal curl turn order. First thing we do on our turn, we can spend that if we want to heal. We're at full health. We can go 10 above that, but we don't need to heal right now. Move any distance across explored environments to an unexplored environment or an ongoing minion battle. So basically our option is to move straight forward. So we'll go resolve this. So this means we are immediately going to get a gold. So now we're rich up to 16. Then we're getting a backstrike and a wither token. And we'll put those on our player board and see what they do. Backstrike, positive effect. When a player with backstrike receives damage as a result of an opponent's offensive roll phase, then we choose to spend this token. If spent, roll one die, half the value, damage rounded up to the attacking player. So that's good. I'm betting the other one's not going to be good. Negative status effect. If a player with Wither token would deal damage as a result of their offensive roll, reduce that damage by one per Wither token, and it's persistent. So that's going to stay on us until we do something about it. And then the last thing we resolve on here, we're getting a level one minion. So our first fight's about to begin. So we've got all the minion cards. Here, give them a shuffle. That one's eager. And the first one we are gonna face, it's a little street rat. So it's gonna start with 10 hit points, four CP. That's gonna be our reward if and when we defeat him. And he's trying to get straights with his dice. And it looks like he's still CP and then deals whatever CP he has as damage and his defensive roll there, rolling four dice, possibly stealing or just flat out ignoring our damage. So I've got our health and combat points set up and I always find a way to bring in my Uber stacks. So with the explore portion done, we've got a minion battle. So it can spin solve here he has first strike, which would be a symbol up in that area, he would go first. Basically, we just uh, reverse the hero step and minion step. But we're going to perform a complete dice thrown turn, seeing our hero's turn order card. So for our upkeep phase, resolve any status effects. These aren't going to do anything. Income phase, gain a CP and draw a card. So we've got three money. And drawing into Adrenaline Surge. It's free to play. We can play it during the main phase. So this is great. You can just look at the symbol to see when you play cards. Roll a die. On that symbol, we're going to heal to and inflict Concussion. And any other outcome, we draw a card. So there's no reason not to ever play that. So now we go into our main phase. Play Ability Upgrades. Play main phase actions. We can sell cards, discarding them to gain a CP per card. We're gonna start with this, rolling one of our dice. And we got another, so we'll draw a card. All right, now we've got an upgrade. Calls two CP and we're gonna put that in. So that's gonna change our overpower it used to be roll three dice, then deal damage equal to the value. If it was at least 14, inflict a concussion. Now, same symbols up here. We're gonna roll three dice. If it's at least 10 damage, we do a concussion and we have an extra ability 
two swords and two heals for healing and dealing two undefendable damage. So we're gonna spend two CP down to one, and this just covers that one up. Then we're gonna discard a card for CP, then go for transference. I know it's early to do it, but I don't like that. Transfer one status effect token from a chosen player to another chosen player. So it's costing us two. And now it's a withering street rat. And we'll end our main phase, off to our offensive roll phase. So this is the Yahtzee portion. Gonna take three rolls and see what we can match for damage. So take our five dice. Three swords and a life, or four swords. Well, I think we'll go for that and see if we can get a fifth one. Yep. So with that ability, we're gonna smack, dealing eight damage. So targeting, if we're playing with more than two players in a non-adventure game, we do that. So it doesn't really affect us in uh, the adventures. Defensive roll phase, our opponent's gonna make one defensive roll. So this shows us he's gonna roll four dice. If he gets double yellow, he's still in a CP. If he gets double red, he's ignoring our damage. So we'll bring his dice in. And he's ignoring all the damage. So that's not what we wanted to see, but oh well. So now for his turn, the way minions work, they're gonna skip the first three and the last two, all they're doing is the rolling phase. So he's gonna roll his four dice. He's trying to get straights. So one, two, three, four. So they always keep two, three, fours unless they're duplicates. And then since the one is part of a small straight, keep that. Now he's got two rolls to try to get a five, which he got. So with a large straight, he's gonna steal two CP, but we're broke, so he gets nothing. And then he's dealing his CP as damage, which is four. But because of the wither, he's minus one. So we've got a potential three damage coming in. Since it is normal damage coming in, we get to use our thick skin, so we get to roll three dice. And for every life we roll, we gain two health. So we're gaining four and taking three. So we end up going up to 36. So his turn is done. This was a multiplayer game. It would go to the next player, but since it's just us, we keep going back and forth until one of us is dead. So we upkeep, get a CP, draw a card. Not this time. Chosen player prevents six incoming damage. Not gonna do anything else. So off to our attack. We're gonna keep the two swords and the pal. See if we can get a sturdy blow in here. All right, so we've got that. We'll see if we can get a sword. Yep. So with that, we're gonna roll three dice then deal damage equal to that value. If it's at least 10, inflict concussion, which really doesn't matter against them. So three dice. 10 damage, he's gonna defend and hopefully not ignore. So he did not ignore, we're doing 10 damage, is, which is enough to defeat him. So treasure, we're looting one, which means we'll bring out this loot chart. We're gonna roll a d20 and see what we end up with. Hopefully, in 18, 19, or 20 would be nice. Get a 14, so one money. So up to 17. And we can finish our main phase if we so choose, but I think we're done. So then we're back to moving. We're gonna head north. A thorn bush. So roll a die, and we'll see what happens. We got a six, on a five or six, we gain a gold. Then we're gonna 
get another level one. This time we've got a Lost Swordsman. 11 health, zero CP. So on guard, he's trying to get all the, I guess, white symbols and a defense. So we start another fight with our turn. Go up to two, draw on to get some. And I've got nothing I feel like playing, so off to attack. All right, five swords right off the bat. I think we're done. So he's gonna defend rolling three dice. Do one damage times the amount of those, plus one times those, and prevents on that symbol. So he's preventing one damage and dealing two damage to us. So we go down to 34. And we were doing eight and he prevented one, so he's losing seven. Going down to four health. And he's gonna attack us. First roll. It went well for us. Second roll. And so with that, he's coming at us with five damage. We are going to defend, rolling three dice. Healing two, so we end up taking three, down to 31. So our next turn, three money. Next card, six it. Change the value of one of your dice to a six for a cost of one. We will just go ahead and roll. Well, I don't feel like we're in need of healing. I'd rather just deal some damage. So second roll. So that could heal us too and deal two undefendable damage, but we can just go ahead and kill him. But we're not going to. So can, yeah, we're just gonna choose the smack, deal three damage. So he's going to defend. He's preventing two of that though, and hitting us for one. Uh, so we're going to respond with a get some. So this can still be played during the, the roll phase action, which we're still in. It's going to cost us two. And we get to roll five dice. So right now we're we're doing we've got three damage banked. Oh goodness. We're doing one more damage. So we're doing four. He's blocking two. So we're both ending up taking two damage. We're down to 29. And he's down to two. So the swordman. Nope. It's gonna hit us pretty hard. Yep. Seven damage coming our way. We go to defend. We're healing four, so end up taking three down to 26. Could use this. Possibly do some damage, but I'm going to keep that and hopefully kill him on my next turn. Getting a CP. Drawn to a Sturdy Blow 2. So this deals 5 undefendable damage versus 4. It cost 1, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Then we'll discard a card. To gain a CP and go in for the attack. So 
So we'll see if we can get this undefendable thing going on. Ending a six, there we got it. So dealing five damage, undefendable, so it doesn't get it to use his ability, and he is out. So a reward, level one loot. Rolling a d20. Getting a 17, ah, close, so three gold. Takes us up to 21. So for movement, we can go here or we can come down to this area. And I think I'm gonna to try to go in this way to see if I'm feel lucky enough going that direction. So moving forward, we get a gold, we gain entangle and then a level one minion. So 22. All right, what's well, a tangle? Uh, we get one fewer roll attempts, so we're just gonna get two chances to roll. But then it will get removed at least. And now we're going after a boulder. A rocket lance, 15 health and two CP. So he wants to go for that. Allows him to roll two dice and deal damage equal to the total roll. On a failed offensive roll, so if we don't get that, he does one undefendable damage and defending, he can prevent some, which makes sense. It's a big rock. So 15 health. Two CP. Does not have first strike. So we're gonna gain. Draw a card, double up. We're gonna go ahead and spend a CP to play that and draw two cards. So we've got smack two and a better D. Chosen player may perform an additional roll attempt of up to five dice during their defensive roll. And since we have two CP, we're gonna upgrade our smack ability. So damage goes up with a three up one with the four, up one there, and then if we get up a four of a kind with our numbers, so not the symbols, but the actual numbers, it will become undefendable. All right. Lots of healing there. All right, maybe we'll just take a turn and see what we can heal. And we're one less roll, so we'll lose and tangle. And that is just gonna let us heal five, so up to 31 health. Because of our strong fortitude. Then on to him. He's looking for nothing but yellow. And he already found three of the four he was looking for. Second roll, nailed it, so we can quit. So now he's rolling two dice and dealing that much damage to us. Which is gonna be six. So we will defend. All right, we're taking six damage, so down to 25. Back to our turn, gain a CP. One more time. Chosen player may perform an additional roll attempt of up to five dice during their offensive roll phase. And we'll go into combat. Going with our swords. All right, we've got two ones, a two and two threes but it is nine damage going his direction. So for his defense, he's rolling five dice and all yellows is gonna prevent one. So he's preventing four. We put five on him at least, down to 10. So he's gonna attack. 
roll one. Oops. Two. And three, so he did not succeed. So on a failed offensive roll, just one undefendable damage. So back to our turn. Go up there. Got a head bash. If you successfully dealt at least eight damage to an opponent after their defense concluded, play this card to inflict concussion. And we're going swinging. And we'll stop. And we've got four threes here, so it's going to be undefendable. Unfortunately, we just get him down to one health. And then his, well, let's see. We are going to discard a card for some money. And now let... The boulder take his turn. One yellow. Two yellow. Three yellow, so he failed again, so one avoidable damage to us. And back to our turn. So four health, or CP. Twice as wild, change the values of any two dice for three. We'll go ahead and discard a card to get us up to five. And then rolling. So we're going to keep two hearts or life and one sword. We're going to go for the war cry to heal two and deal two undefendable damage. And we got it. So up to 25 and he's taken care of since it's undefendable. So reward, level one loot. We got a two. So we're gonna get one of those symbols. We got a plus one. So it's bonus damage. Pauses effect, players may choose to spend these tokens during their offensive roll phase. Each token adds the indicated number of damage, and we've got a stack limit of two on those. So as you can tell, I mean, there's really no time limit. We have to get over there and get back, so our health is the only thing that we need to be concerned about. Because we're just fighting level ones at the moment, and they're kind of hurting us, so we're going to keep on moving. A stained altar. We'll gain two gold and spawn a level one. Alternatively, receive two damage and explore an unexplored adjacent tile. Well, now we'll keep going with the money. So we're gaining two and another fight. So we've got an Oni. Likes rolling yellows. So if he gets one of those, deal five undefendable damage. Deal six undefendable damage and steal four health. So I'm not liking that. So he starts with 11. Zero CP. So we go up to six. Reckless two which is down here, so we're rich enough. We're gonna spend that going down to four. If we get a large straight, we deal 20 damage and receive five damage in return. And it only happens if we do at least one damage. All right, here's hoping for 11 damage. Let's see, still one health. We're gonna to attempt to get overpower. Just three swords, a pow, we need another pow. So our second roll, third roll, didn't get it. So we're gonna six it, spinning a CP, change the value of one of your dice to a six. So we can roll three dice and then deal damage to the total value.
So 14 health for damage. Feel good with that. He does get to defend. Rolling two dice and yellows means he steals. Figure, so he's stealing two health from us. So we go down to 23, he goes up to 13, but we're dealing 14 damage. So level one loot. See what we get, a 20. So we get a rare card. So we go ahead and shuffle the stack. And the way this works is this is gonna, it's not gonna go straight to our deck. It's gonna go underneath our character board. At the end of the, we finish this mission, we can spend 10 gold to add it or see what it is and add it to our hand or deck. So this goes hidden. And we're gonna keep on moving. So we finally get our first one of these tokens or portal shard. So we're one third of the way to being able to go there. So we got a toll bridge, spawn a level two minion. Alternatively, we can pay three CP and spawn a level one. If desired, you may sell cards at this time. Well, let's just see what these level twos are all about. So give them a shuffle. A preview of things to come. And a dreg beast. So he's trying to get five. Our rewards go up. Undefendable. That's not good. Passive ability on a failed offensive roll. Heroes lose a gold. Defense. He gets prevent on yellow. On the red, heroes lose a gold, so he's still in all our money. All right, so we start our turn. I'm getting paid. For free, we can gain two CP. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get paid, going up to six. And we'll start attacking. I like doing undefendable damage, so we'll keep those. So we've got either a sturdy blow or overpower coming up here. Second roll, we want a sword. Didn't get it. So we're just dealing five undefendable damage. So at least he doesn't get to defend on that. He started with 15, so down to 10. He does have one CP. So for his turn, he wants two whites, two yellows, and a red. That's what he's looking for. One white, one yellow, one red. And the white did not get it. So we're gonna lose a gold. Down to 23. Back to our turn, we go up to seven. Drawn to a crit bash two, which we'll go ahead and put in. So that inflicts stun and deals five undefendable damage. That makes it seven and it gives us the option to just roll three sixes to inflict concussion and deal two undefendable damage. Not that great, but we'll go ahead and spin two to bring it in play and go rolling. All right, so we'll keep those. And do this for our last one. All right. So four, we've got four of a kind, so it's gonna be undefendable for seven damage. It's down to three. And it is worth doing less damage do not let him defend. So he's attacking. Got a red, two whites, going for two yellows now. Didn't get it, so we lose a gold. Comes back to us. 
gain a CP, Sturdy Blow three. So that one cost one, this costs two. So when you're upgrading these, if we didn't have this in play, it would cost us two. But with this in play, we get the discount. So it cost us one. So that does six undefendable damage instead of five now. So we're gonna keep that roll. And let's see, we don't have the four of a kind. So we'll get to defend rolling four dice. So for every red, we lose a gold, every yellow prevents a damage. So 21, doing eight damage. So he's out and we're going to level two loot. So 13, two gold. So we got some of the money back he took from us. Move forward, get another healing token and another gold. 24, any hero discards a solve. Alternatively, you can roll a die. One, two, you gain a burn. Three to four, six damage. Five to six, gain a treasure. All right, so we gained one and we're gonna discard it. And level one, little fairy. It's got first strike, so it's gonna go first. It's going after straights. So two undefendable, five damage, stealing a CP and six damage. Rolling four dice on two yellows prevents three. So with it going first, going for straights. So it's gonna keep the two, three, and a five. It will not keep the one. If it had a four, it would. Second roll. There we got the four. So last roll. So small straight deals five damage, but we get to defend. So it's healing five, we're healing two, so we go down to 20. So I'm thinking it might not go through this area. So for our turn, gain a CP, fortitude two. So we do not have that, so we're gonna spend two to bring this in play. So that is going to, our healing goes up one for each of those, and if we get three of a kind, also remove one status effect from yourself. All right. Well, yes, I guess I should reset this. Nine health, two CP. Basically, they only get CP for some effects other characters get to allow them to pay to get out of it at least once. We're gonna keep the two, three swords. So it's nine damage, but it's not unblockable. We're gonna risk it. Well, we've got four of a kind, so it's unblockable, but it's only seven. Down to two. I think that was probably worth it. Now back to the fairy. So it's got a, oops, that was a four. So it's got a two, three, four. So since the one makes it a small straight, it will keep that and try for a five. Didn't get it, so small straight, and we've got five damage coming to us. Three dice. So healing two, taking three, down to 17. Then our turn, up to five. 
Try, try again. You or a chosen teammate may reroll up to two dice. So we're gonna go for the war cry, keeping the two life and a sword. So we need one more sword. And we got it. So we're healing two, up to 19 and dealing two undefendable damage, which is enough to take her out. Gets us a level one loot, which is going to be one gold. So up to 25. So we're gonna move over, getting us a level one loot. A one gets us a plus one hit token. So we've got our limit of two. Get a CP. Remove all status effects from the active player. Uh oh. And then a level two in the Emerald Islands. All right, a Brutus Cyclops, 14 health, three CP, wants to crush us. Four whites and a red, deal six damage, and roll a die, add damage equal to that roll. On a failed offensive roll, deal two undefendable damage. Defense, rolling one die. On a white, dealing three damage. Ouch. On a yellow, heals two. Don't like him. So 14 health. And three. At least we get to go first. So up to seven. Get that out of here. Remove a status effect token from a chosen player. I'm gonna pitch a card to go up to eight. I'm just doing that. We've got a max hand size of six. So I've been fine, but. We're good. So rolling. I'm gonna keep the two threes. Like I said, I'm trying for four of the kinds now. And not gonna happen, so we'll keep those. Last roll didn't work, so seven damage, but he gets to defend. And that's gonna deal three, three damage to us. So we go down to 16. And we did seven to him, so he's down to seven. So for his turn, he wants four whites and a red. There's two whites. So it didn't make it, so that's two undefendable damage down to 14 health. And for our turn, what status effects? Remove all status effect tokens from a chosen player. It's not a great starting roll. Well, it's not gonna be undefendable. But we do have a possible nine damage going after him. His defense. It's gonna be heal two, so it's going up to nine, but we're doing nine damage, so we defeat him. And that's gonna get us some level two loot. So a three, we get one token back, and we're moving down. Get two gold up to 27. An ivory thicket. If you have chosen a teammate, you and a chosen teammate each gain a backstrike and a wither. And I feel like that's just going to affect me. I'm not going to get two of them. And 
Then we get a level two. So we've got an elf. 13 health, 3 CP. Looking for three whites and two yellows to inflict blind and dealing six damage. Passive at the start of your turn, remove all positive status effects from the active player. All right, guess we better use those on our turn. So it's gonna roll one on defense. If another minion's in play, all minions heal half that, otherwise heal the full roll value. Oh goodness. So maybe we can do 13 in one hit. I guess first we'll go up to 10. So there is a max of 15. And we've got our smack three. So we're gonna spin one. So it costs three, but the other one costs two. So just the upgrade. So each of those is going up one. Still need the four of a kind for unfindable. And see what we can do. <laughs> Heal seven. Let's see if we got a three of a kind, which we do. Yeah, I think I will go ahead and do that. Allows us to get rid of the uh, negative status effect. So up to 21 health. And we get rid of wither. So start a turn, we lose these. And three whites and two yellows. So I feel pretty confident she'll be getting it. Yep. So inflict blind and deal six damage. So the next time a player afflicted with this token concludes their roll phase, they must remove it and roll a die on a one or two. The roll fails and has no effect. Six damage coming in. Let's see how much we can prevent. Zero. So we're in our defensive roll phase. We're gonna spend one to prevent six incoming damage. Then go to our turn, gain one, thick skin two, so that upgrades your defense, that's a definite. Spending three, down to six. So now we're rolling four dice. We get to heal two times the hearts. If we roll two hearts, you may also prevent one incoming status effect. I'm liking that. So now we are attacking. And that's not helping. That does. So we've got 10 damage possible. It is defendable. Oh goodness, it's gonna heal six. Taking 10, so down to nine. No way, we gotta roll to see if it even mattered. Yep, that was good. One or two, that would have been wasted. All right, we don't have any positive status effects, so it's just rolling to hit us. And that's what she needs. So we have a chance of preventing one incoming status effect. I think. Yes. So four dice and we want at least two hearts. We only got one. So we're gonna be blinded, six damage, we're healing for two, so four down to 17. Back to our turn, up to seven. 
Bye bye Remove a status effect token from a chosen player. Sure. We're not blind. Go attacking. We'll see if we can get the Sturdy Blow 3 kicking off. Not looking good. I think. We're going to try to get one of these. No. Yeah, we're risking it. Didn't pay off. So we're going to play twice as wild, spending three, going down to two. Change the values of any two dice. Then we're going to tip it, paying one. Increase or decrease any die by the value of one. So that's a five, making it a six. So that means we can do a crit bash. Inflict stun and deal seven undefendable damage. So down to two. So she's stunned, can't do anything. We remove the stun effect. Let's see, after the attack player inflicts its stuns, remove the token, then immediately targets the same opponent with another offensive roll phase. So hopefully we can finish the elf off. I'm going to try to get some healing in this, too. And that roll doesn't matter, so heal two and deal two undefendable damage. So 19 and defeated. So we get a level three reward with her. So we definitely want to roll good on this one. 14 gets us three gold. Up to 30. Then we can move on up to this level three. So we've got a castle. We get three CP up to four. All heroes choose and discard half their cards, rounded up, then draw one. So we're gonna lose two. So we'll get rid of those and draw one into feeling good. Then we'll get a level three. All right, level threes. And get a Crimson Archer. Wants nothing but yellow. Dealing a lot of damage, three of a kind. Inflict the barbed vine on all opponents. On four for his defense. So we can hit multiple opponents. So I guess it's good we're by ourselves. So 14 health, three CP, and our turn. Five and draw a card, samesies. All right, Let's see if we can take him out. I'm gonna try for this crit bash thing again. All right, maybe we'll get some rage going off. No rage. But stunning and seven undefendable damage is always good. Then we get to go again. We'll try four of a kind on this side. Just smack them. Or maybe we'll just go blockable, but 10 damage. So he's rolling four dice. So whites and yellows. So he's dealing four damage back to us. 
but we're knocking him out. So we're down to 15 health. Level three loot. Let's see what we find. 13, three gold to 33. So our options, we can go after one of these for level two treasure and see what's fighting on the other side, or we can just finish this thing. So we're gonna get a solve. I'm gonna get two CP up to seven, three gold up to 36. And we're spawning a level four. It begins with one additional King's Hand token. So our level fours, give this a quick shuffle. So we're fighting a corrupted rogue. So he starts with one token the first strike. So he's getting two of those tokens. He likes going for straights. CP, deal half his damage. Passive at the start of your turn, gain two CP on a failed offensive roll. Gain damage boost plus three and shadows. I like in this. So 30 and eight. Well, these tokens are fairly new for us. So from our scenario sheet, it's shown on minions if they start with him. So he does that. Max tokens used per turn is just one per turn. They're going to be successful on rolls of four to six. And they are automatically spent during two situations. So if the boss minion fails to activate an ability during their roll phase, Remove any non-persistent negative status effects that would normally be removed at the end of the roll phase. Roll a chaos die if successful. In the scenario set on a four to six, gets another roll phase. Or if it's targeted with an ultimate ability, roll a chaos die forces you to reroll one of your dice. So still minion, everything else works the same and it gets first strike. So looking for straights. Oh yes, serve your turn gain two on a failed offensive roll, get some things. All right, so it's up to 10. This guy's gonna hurt us. So it needs a straight. We got a three and a two, re-rolling all the others. So one and a six, we're not keeping a one because it doesn't complete that. Did roll into a small straight. So cunning strike, deal half our CP, its CP is damage, round it up. So five damage coming our way. We defend for nothing. So we take five down to 10 health. So for our turn, uh, I guess I should have spent my solve at the beginning of the turn. All right. Timing matters with that. And I was thinking I'd do it now. So go up to eight, draw into a so wild, change the value of any one die. I'm gonna roll. It's a lot of healing, which isn't going to matter the way that thing's dealing damage. So just keep the one sword. So we're going to keep that. Final roll. Going to go so wild, spending two CP down to six. Change the value of any one die to give us our overpowered. So we're going to roll three dice. 
Total of that is going to be our damage. Ooh, 18. I'll take that. We inflict concussion. So it skips their income phase, which really doesn't do anything. But what sucks is he's rolling five dice on two reds, ignore all damage on any other outcome, stills two CP. We can get out of all that damage, but it didn't. So he's still in two CP from us. Down to four, up to 12. We're dealing 18 damage. So down to 12. Then we're gonna play feeling good, rolling three dice. We're gonna heal one plus two times any hearts we roll. Went to zero, so we just heal one, but that didn't cost us anything. So on to the rogue. Going up to 14. Rolling for straights. We got a two, a three, and a five. And a four. And so another small straight. So dealing seven damage to us. We are defending. With one heart. So five damage, we're taking three, down to eight health. Oh, and I forgot to use the salve again. Oh, I think y'all knew I wanted to do that. That's going to heal us for three plus one per shard collected. So we're gaining six up to 14. A little bit out of order. I think everyone knew I wanted to do that. So then on to our turn. Up to five. Draw into Vegas, baby. Roll a die, gain half the value of CP. And we're rolling. Well, that's not how we're going to kill it this turn, but that's what we got. All right, so 10 damage going in. It's defending. Did not get two reds. So it's still in two CP from us. So up to 16. We did 10 damage, so it's down to two. And I'm hoping we can survive this and actually do the damage next turn. So it's keeping a two and a five. Keeping the four. And so it did not get anything. So it's gonna spin one of these dice. So if it rolls a four, five, or six, it gets to go again. So we got lucky, it got nothing. So on our turn, up to four. Got her mighty blow. Eight undefendable damage. Sure, we'll put that in just in case. I haven't even been paying attention to rolling small straights. So we'll just keep that with those. Deal six undefendable damage. And that will defeat the rogue. So we're going to a reward of four. And that's gonna get us a card. Oops, except we need to roll a different die. 10 is gonna be rare. So bring those back in, give them a quick shuffle. 
And we've got two rare cards. So with that, we have defeated the scenario. So for conclusion, we're gonna shop and get some boss loot. Permanently upgrade your deck by adding loot cards. And the way shopping works, we are gonna to go to our conclusion. So upon victory, we're gonna get three common and one rare card. And we'll see if we can shop with those. So we'll get one more rare. And these are gonna go, we'll see what these are. So blood pack two. So you and a chosen teammate each roll a die. The player with the highest value draws two cards. Oh, not for solo play. That one we can have. Prosperity 2. Draw a card, a chosen hero gains one. Eh, not too excited about that. Then we get three common cards. So double up two allows us to draw two cards. Same as these two, so these are going to replace cards in our hand, which kind of shows you with that symbol down at the bottom. Uh, change the value of one of your dice to be identical to value of any other one of your dice. And transference, transfer one status effect token from a chosen player to another chosen player. So we can see the difference here. It's just the cost in the card, free versus paying one. And double up and transference. So cost, well, yeah, goes down from a two to one. And the double up goes from a one to zero for the same effect. So our gold is gonna to go to the nearest five rounded up. So we're gonna go from 36 to 40. And then shopping for the revealed cards we have, we can spend 10 to get the common, 15 for the rare. If we had epic, 20. If we had legendary, 25. We can sell cards for five and identify the ones we have for 10 and keep them. So we cannot sell the cards that were dealt to us because they're not actually ours yet. Oh, and I guess the one, we wouldn't have seen that one yet. So a little cheat phase there. Doesn't matter, I'm spending 30 on those. So I'm identifying all these for 30 or 10 each. So that takes me down to 10. So we know about the prosperity that I wasn't too excited for it, but I guess it, it replaces itself immediately. So it's not bad We draw a card and gain a CP. Generous two. We distribute three CP among our heroes. So basically for zero, we're getting three because we're the only hero. And to dig deeper two, I may reroll a loot die up to two times. This card may be played at the conclusion of a boss battle. All right, so that gives us an opportunity to get some better loot. I'm not truly excited about any of those. So a 10 gold left, we can afford one of these cards. And I like anything for free. So I think I will spend the 10 to replace our double up. And I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna sell these two cards for five each and then purchase same these two for 10. So I'll upgrade that card. So then we're going to finish our session one. So remaining solves, we had two. So we'll put that in there and that means we're gonna start the next game with two. Unspent gold, we spent all our gold, so nothing there. Unclaimed boss loot. Then we did not explore all the tiles. Don't know if I ought to live through going through those. And total session, so we'll get 20 for that. So 
that's going to get us a max of 22 for the total session. And session two is going to be a boss battle with the Fallen Barbarian. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Going over the basics of how to play Dice Throne Adventures. It's really neat the way they took this competitive dice game and turn it into a co-op. So I like the exploration. Components are awesome. And looking forward to get some more plays in with this. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.